Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this SICC webinar. I'm Victor Mills, Chief Executive of the Chamber. It's a pleasure to have your company today as we welcome the Adobe team back um, almost, uh, they've just been with us for a few weeks ago, telling us all about the amazing case study that is the Adobe transformation story and how they digitalized and digitized their business and their solutions and their processes. And we thought it would be great to follow that one up with this webinar on how can we really transform our customer and employee experience by getting rid of all that paper. I don't know about you, but I've still got plenty of paper in my business and I'm eagerly looking forward to hearing from the Adobe team how they managed to do it and how, what we can learn from their, their story. I'm really delighted today. We've got two executives from Adobe. We've got Rajesh, who is a 15-year veteran of the firm, so we've seen an awful lot of the transformation journey. And he was telling me earlier that he's had more jobs than anybody he knows who hopped companies or changed jobs and worked for other firms, which is exciting. And we've also got Marianne, who's head of legal. And we thought this was a critical piece because, I don't know about you, but so often um, audit legal functions are not always the fastest to take on board um, digitized or paperless solutions. And we really wanted to hear from Marian how uh, Adobe does it. Now, at any time during the presentation that we'll have today, please feel free to ask your questions. Uh, use the Q&A function, which you'll find in the Zoom toolbar at the bottom of your screen. Um, after Rajesh and Marianne have made their presentations, and Rajesh shows you uh, the digital uh, signing solution that Adobe uses, I'll be back to moderate the Q&A. So keep those questions coming. Thank you so much. And over to you, Rajesh. Thank you so much for a warm welcome, Victor. Uh, appreciate uh, the chance again, as you said, uh, to come back to SICC members and share with you our journey on going paperless. Uh, let me start by sharing my screen here. Is everybody able to see my screen? Absolutely. Okay, fantastic. So thank you again. Uh, welcome everyone. And would like to share, start by sharing that changing the world through digital experiences is Adobe's motto. It is in our DNA at Adobe. That is our mission. And let me share this with you that from the moment that you woke up in the morning, uh, encountered anything with your ads, media, the kind of uh, websites you went to or tried to shop on till the time you go back to bed, since morning till evening, whatever you touch, whatever experiences you have on the digital front, chances are most of those experiences have been touched by Adobe or created by Adobe. Experiences have been the core for our business and it is through our products that we are transforming how people work, learn, play, or even brands drive their experiences for their customers. So it is actually every person, right? From a simple artist who's creating his own art form till brands designing and delivering great experiences. We touch every one of them with our tools and hence the mission. Now, when we are looking at the macro trends, Adobe is very fortunate to be at the nexus of these macro trends that are emerging across uh, our workspace. It is a golden age of creativity and design, they say. So design is the competitive advantage that companies, small or large, are having in this phase, in this competitive era. Creativity is not, not just for the pros. We are looking at every one of us <laughs> becoming creative. As devices grow, as devices have much more capabilities, 
it is becoming a newer canvas for every one of us to be creative, to be design oriented, and to make sure that we also use that to our advantage, to our business advantage. We also have technology shaping the productivity. Documents still continue to be at the base of all our work, the way we work, the way we exchange uh, information, the way we even manage personal matters. Mobile devices, as well as cloud, makes it really easy for us to be collaborative, but at the same time be on the same line or the same page that we can start some work on a mobile device and get onto my laptop and continue doing that same work with the advent of cloud and what that is how cloud helps us. So as Victor shared, uh, 15 years in Adobe, I can share with you that that was the time when we were working towards paperless offices. I can tell you paper still exists as Victor shared, but today I would say we are not looking at paperless offices, but we are trying to see less paper. So we are trying to see how we can go less paper office rather than a paperless office as such. And when it comes to experiences, we all understand and agree that experiences matter the most today. Most companies know much more about their customers than ever before. And they can anticipate what kind of an experience their customers are looking for. They also have a lot more data to deal with. Now, managing that data is the biggest mandate. Managing the privacy for their customers is their biggest mandate. And underlying all this is the greatest and the latest we speak about from a AI perspective, artificial intelligence, and how it is trying to replace mundane tasks. It is trying to replace stuff that you don't need to think too much about, but letting employees and customers alike have their own time for much more on the creative side of the business or creativity as such. Coming closer to what has happened in the last few months, the impact of COVID on our work as well as our future of work has been tremendous. It wouldn't be surprising that 67% of the total uh, work population or knowledge workers are working from home. They are working remotely. And it is making it much more critical for CFOs to try and understand how to make continuity, business continuity, the key, how to make sure that it is happening, but at the same time, manage the cost for it. It is not necessarily uh, the time when they would leverage all the resources in a given situation, but at the same time would want to deliver the maximum impact with the least amount of investment to make sure that business continuity happens. At the same time, experiences matter for their employees as well as their customers. We are looking at at least 53% of companies in this particular situation driving towards a digital experience, moving towards implementing something that will digitize the experience for their customers. It is probably one of the biggest levers of digital transformation. That's what COVID has become. And within these 53% of companies, 59% of them are rating electronic signatures as a very important part for their business continuity project, as well as the agility at which they can do business, they can perform the tasks going forward. Now, if you're looking at Adobe's strategy in all this, we are at the core of the, the strategy of ours is for us to make sure that we are helping creative people no matter where they are, from which area, are they students, are they corporates, are they freelancers, making sure that we help them with our tools 
to unleash the creativity, to make sure that they are able to express themselves and create that engaging content. Because until and unless it's engaging, people are not going to have those customers stick to their content online. The second one obviously is accelerating document productivity. And this is where we are helping our customers to make sure that they have, are delivering the better experience with digitizing stuff, with digitizing their documents, with digitizing their workflows to make sure that their experience or their customers experience a seamless workflow. They are able to access those documents. They are able to uh, fill up those forms online. They are able to do all those things with the powerful small tool that we always use, the mobile phone. And last but not the least, powering our, our experiences for the digital businesses. Now, when we are looking at uh, this particular uh, part of the story, this is more from the perspective that how do we make sure that experience for our customers is brilliant and they create a wonderful content and a wonderful experience for their customers. They manage those customers digitally in all their digital properties to make sure that they give the best of quality to them. Now, when we're looking at all these areas, we are, we are looking at the enterprise reality as well for that matter is actually not the same. We are, there is an expectation obviously that yes, digital transformation is happening. Digital transformation needs to take center stage but the enterprise reality for all this is that we are at early stages of those digital transformation journey. If you take a look at small, medium and large corporates, they are in various stages of those, that digital transformation that, is, that they are aspiring. And from that, we understand that at least 44% of the companies have some time or the other actually faced legal or compliance or risk issues around their documents. We also see that 80% of the documents still today are relying on paper, which is why we are wasting a lot more time, a lot more effort and a lot more money. There are only 81% 81, 81 of the organizations actually lack visibility in how documents are once they get into a workflow. If they are in a process, they do not have the visibility where the document is stuck, which particular person or a process is it held at, at that particular moment. And that all leads to a very poor experience, a poor experience for their internal customers, which are their employees, as well as their external customers. So that is where they start staying back or falling behind in their journey for digital transformation. Now, when we are looking at this, it is not just one particular department or one particular area in our organization that is facing this particular challenge. We can look across departments. When we look at human resources, HR, you know, delays in hiring due to paperwork, manual paperwork, uh, delays in hiring maybe due to policy changes, making sure that everybody gets those, that paper on time. Maybe they have to physically sign that paper and send it back to somebody. Procurement, when it comes to you know, contacting vendors, making sure that the vendors fill up the NDAs that are available, making sure that they are signing on the agreement in the right time at the right place, uh, lost or inability to track where the documents are. So, you know, we are lo looking at all, most of our departments, sales, procurement, legal and compliance, and we'll hear from our legal team also going forward, but that is where this is getting stuck. It is across the enterprise. It, is, it creates a poor employee prospect as well as customer experience due to the amount of paperwork or due to the less digitization that is happening across. Now, 
we hear you on this particular case that what we hear is these are operational inefficiencies. And what do we need to do obviously is to drive efficiency by reducing the manual work, by reducing paper-based processes. If, if somebody sends me something to sign, the first thing comes to my mind is, or should not probably come to my mind is, how do I take this email and print it out? How do I then fill it up with pen and paper? How do I then sign it, scan it, and then mail it back to them? So that is something that should be avoided. That is, that is not something that will drive the kind of process or the kind of efficiency that we are looking at. Reducing errors in routing, authorization, execution, uh, better management and control of our document life cycle. Or even though last but not the least is the compliance risk that will get involved or reducing that when it comes to paper or manual workforce or work process. So what we are proposing here is the Adobe Document Cloud Enterprise. The Adobe Document Cloud Enterprise is an extensible platform that will help you deliver exceptional experiences as well as drive business efficiency across any surface. Now, it, we're talking about any surface here because that is where you, if you take a look at the circle around, this is, it includes our Acrobat part of the story, which is uh, Acrobat, which is available on your desktop, which is available on your mobile phones, which is available on your tablets. Uh, that subscription can help you connect with what is available on your laptop or how you can store documents with PDF services on the cloud. You can also utilize electronic signatures, and I'll come to that in a minute. But apart from that, we also make sure that when somebody is using the Adobe Document Cloud Enterprise, we want it to be integrated with your existing system so that your users do not face a challenge in terms of, oh, this is something new and I need to fiddle with it or I need to learn. So that particular case is taken out in terms of document cloud enterprise. Obviously, it is talking about the end-to-end -end digital document experiences. Adobe has been a leader in dig digital document solutions as well as e-signatures. It has been for a really, really long time now. It is 20, over 25 years that Acrobat has been in play in the industry. Adobe is changing how the world is experiencing digital documents. It starts by changing the relationship between content and data. So let me give you a brief idea of what's happening with PDF. Over 250 billion, with a B, PDFs were opened last year, okay? We are looking at over 30% of all documents that are available with Office, inside of people's Office 365 are PDF documents. There are around 250 million signatures that were made with electronic signature, Adobe e-signatures last year, and 630 million mobile app installs. So if you're looking at Adobe from a really, really long time, which is 25 years is what we are, we, we are saying that we've started doing this. And to now, there is Adobe Acrobat available across devices, be it Android or iOS. Uh, we have added latest innovation to our Acrobat side of the story with Adobe Scan which allows you to capture the data that you are wanting to digitize to make sure that it becomes a editable PDF as soon as you get it into Acrobat. There is document intelligence to understand where is the next field that you need to be filling in. It also allows you in Adobe Reader, the plain simple free Adobe Reader to repurpose or liquid text so that where it depends, it does not depend or does not matter what screen size you are using. So any, anything that you are reading would be a pleasure and a good experience for you with Adobe Reader. When you're looking at integrations and powerful workflows, 
We are presently integrated with pre-built integrations with 150 plus systems across. These are well-known systems, enterprise systems, business critical systems. But at the same time, a day-to-day -day atmosphere, like something like Microsoft Office 365, there's a deep integration around with it to make sure that your day-to-day -day work happens smoothly. But when we are looking at document cloud also, we are looking at a trusted and secure ecosystem. Security is one of the biggest part of our DNA. And this is not something that we take lightly. We are actually audited by the top consulting firms every year to make sure that it is a top-notch secure system that we are sharing with our customers. We are compliant with most of those logos that you see there, most of the standards that, you, that are there in the, on the globe. So we're making sure that we are ISO certified, uh, P PCI, DS, DSS compliant from a credit card perspective, Pharma, which is HIPAA ready. If at all there is, there is anything and everything to do with PDPA here in Singapore, with private data protection or GDPR, which manages the entire European Union from a, uh, from a privacy, privacy perspective. The signatures that are happening with electronic signatures are legally binding electronic signatures according to the law of the land. And the best part is that they are all auditable. So somebody goes through a particular workflow, we are making sure that they are auditable and we know that this is the next step or this is the person who did something to that particular document to sign that particular document. The document cloud vision obviously is to go digital. First, yes, digitize everything, right? Starting from a piece of paper to making sure that the most complex workflows can be digitized. Staying digital, so it is not just the workflows, but even the last mile when we are looking at a electronic signature or a signature at the end of the mile that is digitized, hence staying digital across the journey. And last but not the least is thinking digital because when we are looking at workflows, when we are looking at any new processes to be built, we expect our customers now to start looking at digital first, thinking at thinking digital first because this is maybe a one-off environment that, oh, we are going through a pandemic, but at the same time, we are, we are stuck at many other places. We are in remote areas. We are probably stuck in traffic. We are probably traveling most of the time. And how in those circumstances, because the workforce is not necessarily in an office today, what is that particular workflow looking like when it comes to everyone being on the remote and working remotely, utilizing their devices that they have in their hands. So thinking digital in that particular perspective. Let me bring you closer back home. Uh, SMRT Corporation is our multimodal transport service provider here in Singapore and they are one of our key customers who moved from a paper-based workflow to sign on their, from their procurement side to sign on their vendors. When the signing of vendors used to happen earlier, it was this particular agreement used to travel office to office across the island and the signing process was absolutely three weeks. Today, with Adobe Electronic Signatures, SMRT is able to reduce that process to just hours. There is obviously a quick turnaround time. They're utilizing our e-sign services, as I shared, on their procurement side of the business, but they're utilizing it with Ariba, which is their procurement tool, where they have been completely modified that to digitize it to make sure that everything happens digitally and they are experiencing within the first year itself more than $100,000 worth of saving.
So that is a case study that I wanted to just bring it up. When we are looking at strengths from an Adobe perspective, we have, we have been the best in the 30, 37 year old history that Adobe has been around. It is the fastest growing company and a successful company for that. The idea behind this, me sharing this with you, is when you are looking at partners or a partnership to drive through not just this particular digital transformation journey, but many others, there is a strong and dedicated partner with you who is completely focused on innovation to make sure that any next step or next version of digital is coming up. We are there with our products. We are there with our innovation to make sure that you have the right tools in your hand to face that, to create that experience for you. We have a larger set of customers, a broad range, starting from just the influencer or the um, individual who is a freelancer who is creating content right up to the Fortune 500 companies who have made Adobe their mainstay, who have made Adobe systems their main uh, critical business partner. When we're looking at a thriving ecosystem, obviously we are looking at a large growing ecosystem of our partners. We have these system integrators who are working with, with us to make sure that your business can deliver the right kind of experiences to your customers. When we are looking at uh, exceptional brand and team, we are a brand that is recognized across the globe, uh, across various countries as the best company to work for. And at the same time, the tremendous workforce that works with Adobe for Adobe to make sure that we deliver the best tools and the best experiences for our customers so they in turn deliver the best for their customers. I would like to just bring your notice to this particular uh, pledge that we are requesting here today. Uh, so what we are what we are requesting you to scan this particular QR code and we are helping every signature that you pledge by 31st of July 2020. We will support a school in Philippines by Adobe will donate $10 for every signature they receive today to enable continuous learning during this pandemic. So please get your phones out, uh, scan the QR code and pledge your signature to make sure that Adobe will donate $10. And thank you so much for your support on this particular initiative. Now with that, I would like to stop my presentation and I would like to hand it over for you to hear from the practitioner herself. I would like to hand it over to Ms. Marianne Lowe, who is the head of legal for Adobe in Southeast Asia. Marianne, over to you. Thanks so much, Rajesh. Okay, so hi everyone, good afternoon. I am the head of legal in Southeast Asia, based out of Singapore. I'm actually responsible for the day-to-day -day sales and all the transactions relating on the sales and procurement, as well as providing advice to the business on data protection issues, privacy or regulatory advice. Next slide, please. So I think before I really start, I would like to say that there's a lot of materials and lots of webinars, uh, law firm advice that you can find on the web pertaining to what the state of the law is and what is enforceable under Singapore law or even various other laws around the region. So my purpose today is really to actually share with you what it is like um, where we actually adopted the technology, the obstacles, what went through our heads, how we thought about the issues, and how we thought about mitigation of the risks. So with that, I will actually invite you to kind of like 
walk through with me in terms of like the workflow and see the workflow process through my eyes as a legal practitioner. So this um, one to six stages would actually be quite familiar to you if you had either negotiated a contract or sent something to your legal department. So it's quite a common scenario. You, you get sent a contract, you might toss it over to your legal department for review. Your legal department takes the time, reviews it, sends the red line across to the other partner, and then both parties may start negotiating, get on calls, exchange red lines, and of course, you repeat step one, two, three, depending on how involved the negotiations are. And when you get to stage five, everyone's really happy, especially the salespeople and all the business owners. You want to close out your contract, get it signed, and move on. Get ready to actually perform the contract. But this step six that you see here, there's actually more than meets the eye. And you would have thought that stage one to five, you have finished doing all the heavy lifting. And step six is really easy. But actually, when you look under the hood, as what Rajas was sharing, even with SMRT, sometimes it could even take weeks, up to three weeks to sign the contract, even after closing out all the issues. And this is not uncommon. This is quite a typical phenomena that we see with a lot of big organizations, much more if you have signatories based out of the country. Next slide, please. So I would like you to actually envision yourself back in the early 20, like 2000s, where we didn't have smartphones, Google wasn't even a thing, we suddenly were not using YouTube in this really non-digital world. And as a, a lawyer, most of the time, I don't find myself as a signatory of the contract. Most of the time, I negotiate, I review, but I would require the managing director or director to actually execute the contract because only they are the authorized signatory. So this first picture that you see there of me running, it's kind of really a tongue-in-cheek explanation of there's so many hours in my day in my previous life as well, where I would actually have to run and catch directors across buildings, wait outside the meeting room, maybe they are engaged on a call and they can't sign a contract at the moment. But in a very physical sense, I couldn't simply leave the document on their table and run off or maybe they went out for lunch and it's just not secure and leave it lying on their table where everyone could see it. So I would like have to double back many times and this is not uncommon for, for lawyers or even legal counsel in most law firms as well. This is quite usual because we are the ones who reviewed the contract and we would actually need to give assurance to the signatory that it's been properly vetted. This is the right document that we printed out. Nobody tampered with it. This is the final one for signature. If I look at the middle picture over there, um, in the non-digital world, it's very common as well to have a dedicated room whereby all the papers are stored. And in my previous life as well, every time I wanted to review a contract, I would go down to this room, I would sign in and sign out. It was a very manual and physical process. And, and that emotion that you see with the guy there really, really illustrates what goes through my mind when I have to go back and dig history and go through many agreements, finding something that I'm not sure which file it's in. It's, it's really quite a frustrating exercise. And the third picture actually is more on the time to execute. If we think about just that last stage of execution, and when you think about having to career your documents cross border, even, let me just propose that even at the shortest, if I have my director sign it, I get it couriered out today, it reaches the counterparty, whether it's in the US or Europe or whichever country, even somewhere nearer, say Thailand, it takes them minimally overnight mail to get it signed by the director. Hopefully they're not traveling and courier it back to me in Singapore. So easily at the fastest, it's probably 36 hours. And that is at the fastest. But typically we would see things like Korea, you missed the deadline because the cutoff was 3 p.m. And you just really don't get your document even sent across. So these three are like the key areas that really kind of we struggled with in the non-digital world. And certainly it's poor productivity, not just for the lawyer, for the directors, and just all employees around. Next slide, please, Rajesh. 
So I would like to actually now show you a little bit of the journey that we Adobe took when we decided to kind of solve this problem. We saw it as a productivity issue. It was really useless for someone, whether it's the legal or secretary, to run around chasing down directors for signature. And we actually went all the way. We didn't just like use a electronic system. We bought a solution. It's called EchoSign. So we acquired a company back in 2011 and basically, it wasn't an overnight process. Of course, in order to do it well, we had to integrate it with our contract management systems. And over time, somewhere about 2015, we actually managed to get a lot of our templates signed coded. So signed coded meaning like the signatory portion was a block that was an automated process. And basically, over 90 plus templates were signed coded and we could actually generate it from our system. And salespeople could run with the very common templates like NDAs without coming to legal. But the key thing here that I want to highlight is we didn't do an all or nothing approach. So about 2016, when we decided that it was actually very... Um, low risk for us to start doing the bulk of the volume of our contracts, which is the day-to-day -day business sales contracts, to let it all be electronically signed. But we, we actually carved out four countries, which is China, Taiwan, Korea, Vietnam, the KT, uh, the CTKB countries for short, as a carve out. These four countries we saw as riskier, not because the law prohibited electronic signatures, but because the use of a company stamp was so entrenched in their culture and the mindset that we didn't want to run into problems. If we ever got challenged in court and the court might just say, you are a reputable company, you are a large um, company, you know that the company seal is very important, you should have just you know, used a wet ink signature plus a company seal. So that was a large part of our going paperless journey. We still never allowed the CTKB countries until 2019. So 2019, there was a turning of tide and actually suddenly with COVID now upon us, we do feel like there's actually a reassessment of even these somewhat higher risk countries to actually allow um, electronic signature for all of our documents now. So since the late 2019, we've allowed even countries like CTKV to all use electronic signing for all the sales contracts. And thankfully, that actually put us in a very good position because that was just way before COVID hit us. Next slide, please. Well, as with all things, um, there's always certain barriers to entry when you're adopting a new technology. And if I may just talk about it in like three main pillars, there was of course integration and investment that comes with it. But where we thought about the ROI and the productivity of our people and what it means to close a contract on time. As we know, contracts are really the lifeblood of what drives the, the business. We couldn't afford to have a contract not get signed just because it was sitting on someone's desk. It really just made more sense to kind of have a one-time pain, spend the money, get it integrated well, and enjoy the full long-term benefits of this um, investment. And with adoption, I would say, of course, there's an internal aspect as well as an external. Internally, Adobe users, like whether it's our directors who are now having to e-sign documents, they found it such a joy because basically you can do it with your mobile phone, they could be traveling, and they just basically use their mobile phone, access the document, and sign it right there and then. They don't come back after a two-week break to a pile of papers on their table anymore. So adoption within Adobe was actually simple. And externally, I think that's harder to control for us. Customers who are so-called more open and more mature markets readily accepted this process as well. And even for the less so-called open countries, like the more conservative countries, for example, even in Japan, if I make share example, they are still, I think for the longest part, pre-COVID at least, they actually still wanted their documents to be wet inked, handwritten signature. But that didn't stop them from allowing us, Adobe, to continue e-signing our side of the document. So basically, our approval and our productivity was not impacted by the fact that the 
the customer didn't want to use the solution. We got it e-sign, routed it quickly, but our customers, if they so choose, can still take our e-sign document, print it out, run it through their internal process. Maybe they have many multiple stakeholders to go through before they wet ink and written their signature. So that's, that's really what we see. Like that's really a real benefit for us, even if the customer is a little bit more traditional. And last but not least, of course, there's always a legality issue and risk and compliance comes as a big key. And because I'm legal, I will do a double click and talk a little bit more about this exact pillar. If I may have the next slide, please. So when I'm, as a legal person, I'm always thinking about actually enforceability, admissibility, which is like admissible in court, the security of it and auditability. So if we just look at enforceability, I basically want a document that I can rely on it, depend on it in time to come, especially when it's being challenged. And when I think about it, there are certain presumptions afforded to us under the Electronic Transactions Act, which is the primary legislation for Singapore, that actually gives us a presumption. If we can have a secure electronic signature, like using a very reliable process and device, there's a presumption that's afforded to us. That means that secure record is actually signed by the person who it identifies. And with that presumption, it actually helps us a lot. And I also want to say that um, in terms of admissibility, we also always worry that if it's time to go to court, what happens? Will your document be not admissible in court? So it's also good to know that in Singapore, there's the Evidence Act and it actually allows us to bring electronic records and there will be a presumption as well. As long as it can be shown that there's a process and a device that ordinarily provides and communicates an accurate record, that, uh, that record in question would be seen and taken to be an accurate record. So this is actually quite interesting. Like if we think about before, um, the digital age when things were not electronic and there was a challenge in court that maybe the other party is saying, I didn't sign it. It was fraudulently signed. There was identity theft. And then what would typically happen is the other side might try to bring a handwriting expert into the court to give evidence and to show why that signature should or should not have been that person's signature. So with our electronics um, process and it being a very reliable, dependable process because of the technology behind it and the way it's being run, we actually have our solution consultants or even our engineers having to be able to test in court and explain how our process and our signed signature actually works. And so that is really, to me, much more a reliable, objective way of explaining and attesting to why it's a very strong likelihood this person signed the document and we can prove what time he did it, the authentic the authenticity, his identity, all can be identified rather than a handwriting expert. It's really far more objective. Security. Security, what can I say? In, in, the, in the old days, when I'll show you that, that room full of paper and documents, it's, it's really, it could be subject to fire. Anyone who really wanted to do anything with the documents could just break the lock to the door. And in those warehousing um, situations, typically after, say, X number of years, all these documents get so-called warehoused and archived in a very physical warehouse. So, that, in a, in a sense, now in hindsight, with the digital age, it's really like an archaic way of safeguarding your, your document. It's like putting your money under the bed, thinking it's more secure than being in the bank. So in terms of our security, as Rajesh mentioned, we have one of the highest um, certifications that we undergo. And it being a technology that we can rely on, every change in the document, can actually be seen. You can see when a document is actually tampered with. And this is really a big benefit for us. In the non-digital world, we used to have to initial on every single page. And the idea that goes behind that is so that nobody replaces a page subsequently that is without our knowledge. So we had relied on these very so-called manual, handwritten ways of securing what is the final document that both parties signed. 
So with, with like the cloud and with all the security measures in place, it being encrypted in transit and at rest, it really gives us a greater assurance. And of course, auditability, Rajesh talked a bit about it. Basically, it's an audit trail, a report that shows who signed it at what IP address at what time, who signed first, and then who did it go to after. This is certainly a benefit which we definitely do not have in a physical, hard copy, handwritten signature world. Next slide, please. Yes, so I guess um, here is where I would want you to step into our heads and how we thought about that problem. So the problem is trying to be more productive. Um, the high volume of contracts, which are sales contracts, how do we make this more automated, but do it in a, a little way that, that kind of is, does not unduly increase our risk as a company. And we actually took a risk-based approach. And, and this is what I mean by it. Like maybe if I can take you to the last picture on the right, the types of contracts. Like I said, we focused on so-called the high volume, low to medium risk business contracts, which are our sales contracts, high volume. And so-called these would make a big difference if we allow electronic signatures. And this isn't just a position, for example, if I were going to buy or if the company was going to acquire a piece of land or acquire a new building. We would never do like um, a purchase of land or purchase of building via electronic signatures. So that, that is what I mean by you consider the types of contracts and maybe this is something you can do as well in your company. Another factor that plays into how we assess the risks is the signatories. Where are they based? Who are they? Do you know them? Is the first time we're dealing with them via an electronic communication? So in our minds, it's always about, we took a look at the markets that we typically play with. And I think that's how we came up with the four initial slightly higher risk countries, the CTKB countries. But apart from that, all the other countries actually allow electronic signatures. They actually have the same weight as a wet inked handwritten signature. So from that perspective, we were quite comfortable that the signatories in our main markets in Southeast Asia were really... Um, okay to accept we won we will not run into much difficulties or challenges downstream and of course the next picture which is the second one on local laws so of course we did our own analysis like local laws like i said all countries in our region actually give the same weight typically to a to an electronic signature and a wet ink signature but they always have a list of excluded items typically these are wills um, negotiable instruments like promissory notes from banks or bills of lading. And then, of course, the third one being sale and lease and disposition of land. Typically, these are the, the list of documents which are high risk. Like imagine a property, it's high risk to an individual. You cannot afford to take any mistakes. So from this short excluded matters, typically all other types of contracts could be signed using electronic signatures. And last but not least, which is something that is not so obvious and even um, goes beyond legal, is the culture and mentality of the, the customer and who you're dealing with. So law aside, so the law in most countries don't even prohibit electronic signatures. But if you know that your customer, um, and for us, it was the CTKB countries for the longest time, that they were so entrenched with this stamping that we didn't want to risk it um, going with electronic signature signing for these CTKB countries until much later when now it seems to be opening up and embracing these culture. So next slide, please. And I guess to end off, this is the last slide. I will talk about the benefits. Without a doubt, if I think about even that three weeks to completion, and we're just talking about just the signing. I'm not even talking about the whole contracting process, just the signing. We have easily taken it, what, sometimes three weeks or even 36 hours to, if parties really wanted, they could mobile sign within an hour, couple of hours. No restrictions on where your signatories might be based. In terms of the second pillar, security audibility, I think I've spoken quite a bit on this. A physical room versus the cloud with really encrypted um, technology surrounding it, and you can actually decipher when a person tampers with a document. The audit um, trail that we have, which each signature that gives us a lot of assurance. 
And last but not least, which is really the greatest part of my day is increased productivity. It automates a lot of the workflows, the processes, and even like things that are commonly signed, like NDAs, um, guarantee letters, uh, offer letters, employment contracts, assignments, novations. We all do it um, with electronic signing, even board resolutions, and yeah, you name it, I think pretty much we are 99% paperless today. So with that, I will actually hand it back to Rajesh, who would actually give us a small little demo. Thank you, Marianne. So let me let me quickly get on to my demo here. So yes, uh, that was that. So we 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 have spoken a lot about. Uh, what the workflows can be, how how secure they are. I just wanted you to have a glimpse of how easy it is to have this electronic signature started and get done with. So if I if I just show you very quickly, uh, I can actually start a particular uh, journey via my Acrobat, which is on my desktop. I can actually I have this non-disclosure agreement open here. I can very quickly go into something like fill and sign, and then here click on request signatures. So this is where I can start if I am starting from Acrobat itself. But if I am in uh, on my browser, I, I just wanted to show you that Adobe Document Cloud or Adobe Acrobat Document Cloud is called so because you have the entire toolkit here on a browser. So you see that I'm on a browser right now. I can export PDF, combine PDFs, edit them, uh, compress them, do all the things that I could on my desktop as well as on my mobile. But at the same time, go here and click on uh, click on Adobe Sign here. And obviously you can see that it is going through my Okta because uh, Adobe is using Okta as a single sign on to get on to any of its technology. So Adobe has utilized this. If you, if your IT or you need to do it, you can do it. So it is an additional layer of security. What I'm going to do is uh, start by showing you that it is a very simple dashboard that you see here where I can, select a particular document from the library if I want it. I can see what is happening with the activities for the month. I can create a web form. I can also do a mega sign. What do I mean by mega sign? If I wanted 2000 people in the organization to sign electronically on one single form, I can actually initiate mega sign, do a mail merge and send it across to them. But let me just start by a very simple demo here, which is on sending a file for signature. I'm going to send this to my Gmail address, uh, which is this one. And then I will also probably just for the demo sake, send it across to my Hotmail address as well. So as you see, I can add up to 25 people in this. I can say complete in any order. So the document is sent to all people at one go and they sign and when they send it back, it comes back as one particular document. Or I can say it is a workflow. It has to go to my Gmail ID first, that gets signed and then it goes to my Hotmail ID, okay? Now, on the requirement for signature, I would like to have it like a email. So I'm sending it to somebody's email, generally the first level of security because my email, nobody else opens it but me. But if I said that this particular contract was a high value contract and you wanted additional security on this, I can actually add a OTP, a one-time password like we use for our banking transactions. So let us say I'm here, uh, that's my number. I can go ahead and click okay there. Now, until and unless I get a text or a phone call with a one-time password, I will not be able to open that document, not even view it, 
and not sign it, obviously, right? So for the first one, I'm just putting in an OTP as well. I can always have a completion deadline. So I can say, oh, this document needs to be signed within three days. If it is not signed within three days, it becomes an invalid link and the person on the other side will not be able to sign it. Okay, that is the completion deadline. I can also set reminders every third day probably that, hey, Mr. So-and-so, this has been a document sent to you for signature. Please, can you send it, sign it and send it back to us. Now that said, I'm not gonna do all those things. I'm gonna add a file here. Now I'm going to choose a file which can be a PDF document, it can be a, a JPEG file, it can be any format that you would like to use. Here, I'm going to start with a Microsoft Word document. I'm going to add this document. And when I add this, I'm going to say preview and add signature fields. So this is the same non-disclosure agreement that I showed you on Acrobat, what it is going to do is open that particular document and it would show you that there is a form to be filled in. But this particular form right now is just a blank form. You see that? There's no fillable areas here. All these areas are demarcated, but there's no fillable areas here. All I'm going to do is quickly click on this left button here and it makes it a fillable form. You see that? Now that is a fillable form there, but what you see on the right hand side is there are two signatories signing this. One is myself in my Gmail account. The other one is myself with my Hotmail account and the Hotmail account demarcates the, with the color blue. So if, let us say it was not just two people, but there were many departments. So it was going to go into the IT department first, then it was going to get into procurement, then it was going to get into finance, and finally legal was gonna sign it, or something like that. I can assign a field to a particular department. So let us say the address is the field that I don't want it to be filled in by my Gmail. What I can do is double click here and just say, oh, this one can Mr. Patel from the Hotmail account sign this. And if I wanted this to be a required field, you see it has automatically turned blue here. But if I say it is a required field, it automatically gives me a star here, the red star. That means until and unless I fill up that portion, I will not be able to sign and deliver the document. So we don't need it to be a required document for now, but you get the idea. And obviously there are many other things that you can add. There are signature fields that you can add. There are signature info fields like the title, company, name, and stuff like that. There are data fields that are available like text, dropdown, checkbox, radio buttons. We can even add a file attachment. Now this is interesting because if I wanted somebody to send me a signed PDF, but with that, I wanted them to attach whatever it is, their invoice, uh, their specs for the particular material that they are ordering. They are, uh, if at all it's a government thing and I wanted a IC, a ID card to be attached with it, I can actually say file attachment, I want this to be a required field and this one should be a ID card. So the person who receives this can click on it and attach a particular document with this file. So they sign it, they attach the file and they send it back. Right now, we're not going to do that because I just want to keep it as simple a demo as possible and a quick one. So let me start by sending this document. There are two signatories here and it is going to go to my Gmail account first. All I need to do is just make sure that my phone is visible to you. Okay, my phone is there on the screen. And let me just go here and say send. When I say send, what this is doing is, oh, yes review again, sorry, uh, I need, there are two signatories. I need a signature field, a second signature field. So let me quickly do this, draw a second signature field and just say Hotmail. So this, the one in the, the brown one is the one for Gmail. This one is for Hotmail and now I can send this. Now, once I send this, 
what I'll do is open my phone here and you'll see very quickly my Gmail account actually popping up a notification. And if I just show you just my phone right now, you're looking at the phone. This is the email that I got just now, which says review and sign this particular NDA document that has been sent to you. If I say review and sign, it asks me to open in a browser. So what I wanted to share here is that it is not asking me to open in an Adobe app. You don't need to download an app. You don't need to be an account holder for Adobe as a recipient. You do not need to do that. And if I said, oh, text message, yes, send me the code. Because you see, I put an OTP, a one-time password there. Now, I will just wait for my OTP to appear. There is my OTP. So if I just clicked here, that's what it is, 487918. If I go to Chrome, it says from messages. I'm putting in that OTP there. And if I said click OK, only and only then, it allows me to open that particular document. Now, this is opening on a browser. That is the reason the person who is receiving it doesn't need a specific license, as I said. Now, you see what it tells me? It tells me to start, if I start here, I can actually say where all my fields are to be filled up. I can very quickly also show you if at all people, there, are, there is somebody who's an executive and wants to delegate it to somebody else to sign, they can click on delegate signing to another and they will be able to delegate it. They will be able to decline the signing if they wish to and they will be asked a reason why they are declining. So let me just go ahead and fill up my name here. Uh, and then when I say click to sign there, I'm just signing there and it, you see it automatically, I'm just turning my phone into a horizontal way so that you can see what the signature looks like. But you see it is signed already because I use this particular phone all the time and you see the saved check mark there. That is the reason it is saved my signature. But if I just clear that and I said clear this, there are three ways that I can sign this document as a recipient. On my phone, I'm going to go ahead and say, I, I just want to type my name. So that's it. Typing my name, Rajesh Patil, that will sign it. I can go ahead and put and sign with my finger here. So I'm just going to use my finger. There you go. And that's my signature. Or I can actually go and select an image. So there's a paper pen signature that I have. I can select an image and click a picture of that image or that signature and apply it here as well. So let us go ahead and do this, say apply. And I'm not gonna finish this right now, but I want you to see as the person who sent this document, what is his experience? So I'm getting into my desktop here and I'm just gonna show you manage this agreement. So today we are on the 27th of July. This is the document that is out for signature. You see it is not getting signed as yet because I haven't signed it. But if I go to the history, it actually shows me that Rajesh Patil sent it at four o'clock. 4.03, he, this document was sent out. He viewed it at 4.04 .04, and then it is waiting to be signed. If I say finish on my phone and tap to sign, there is one more quick thing that I would like to show you here. Obviously, it says next Rajesh Patil will sign. Why? Because obviously it has gone to Rajesh Patil, the Hotmail account for me to sign. But it also allows me to download the copy on my phone. But here, if at all we go back to the history, it actually shows me that the document was e-signed by Rajesh Patil with his Gmail account. And it is now sent to his Hotmail account for signature. Now, we have spoken about all the things on the audit report. So let me just quickly show you this, that the audit report is, looks like this. This is what it, so it has a unique transaction ID. So every audit report or every transaction would have a unique transaction ID there. The agreement history follows where it says that this was sent by Rajesh whose IP address was this, as Marianne mentioned. It also tells you that there was a phone number that was used, you see that? For the OTP, a one-time password was used to access this document and sign this document. Obviously, now it has gone to Rajesh, this is, this is email to the Hotmail account 
and then it will be back there. But this was a quick overview. Now, this is, I started it from a dashboard within my browser. All this is available integrated with most of the enterprise systems that people use and even with Office 365. So let me, let me quickly, if I, if I may, go to, uh, this is PowerPoint, which we were using right now. I can do a send for signature from here. So PowerPoint, Word, Outlook, if I have an email and I have an attachment, I can send it for signature. All one needs to do to get started is log in to their Office 365, which I am already because I am on PowerPoint, but I can sign in into my Adobe Sign account and it will allow me to send for signature. It will allow me to see the agreement status here where I started. Okay, so with that, let me just go to the Q&A tab here and hand it back to Victor for us to see if there are questions that we can help answer. Thanks very much, Rajesh. That was um, absolutely fantastic. Uh, and also, Marianne, wonderful presentation. Uh, you, you've answered most of the questions I had. Uh, it looks like you've answered um, the audience's questions too, because there aren't any in the Q&A box. So this is going to be the shortest Q&A in history, unless oh. somebody is brave enough to, um, or, or needs to ask a question. But let me start, first of all, if I may, by just asking you, um, you quoted at the beginning of your presentation a whole load of statistics. 53% um, of companies are implementing or thinking of expanding digital document solutions. Where did these statistics come from and how many people roughly do they cover in terms of the, the, the sample size? Oh, so this was, this was done as a survey, uh, Victor. This came in as a survey from Forrester that was done in June 2020, just uh, last month. Uh, I can share with you uh, the, the details of the survey. I do not have it offhand right away, but this was a survey that was done by Forrester around the future of work and the COVID situation. Thank you very much. I mean, one of the, one of the, um, the statistics that frightened me somewhat was 44% of companies have had legal or regulatory action or issues with yeah. their documents. So that just proves the point and it proves what Marianne was saying earlier that um, you know, it's all very well having paper, but it can get lost, misplaced. Um, it can be subject to fraud. Um, it can be subject to your favorite child or your favorite pet spilling food or a glass of wine all over it. All sorts of things can happen. And it can also mean that you've got uh, potentially legal issues. So uh, it, it's, it's, it's a very high statistic in, in my view um, and speaks to the fact that if you have complicated processes, you're only as good as your weakest link and often those weakest links will break. So that, that was very, very interesting. Um, just for a layman like me, for my benefit, how, how does a company start? Do we have to pay um, an extra fee to use the Adobe Sign tool? I would imagine we do, but maybe you could just speak a little bit about that um, because I'm sure I'm not the only one who's wondering. Sure, sure. That's a very good question, Victor. So, uh, that's, so there, are, there, are, there are links. I can, I can share the link uh, with you uh, to share it with the uh, team, uh, with your members. There is a trial link, Victor, that is available from Adobe for Sign. It is a complete license for 14 days, one four. So if, if somebody wants to just uh, give it a ride, uh, can download it, uh, set up a trial account and get it started. Uh, when it comes to our experience with how customers have started on this, be the biggest of customers actually, they have always uh, started with one particular process. So in the, in the case of SMRT also, uh, they started with just one process, which was procurement. So th that, is, that is how they start. They would select a particular 
uh, workflow and they would say, okay, this is where I have the maximum uh, paper usage and this is what is important. So let me start with this and then get into their other processes slowly. Okay, and is the, is the Adobe tool um, you know, sufficiently intuitive like an iPhone uh, for a lay person like me to, to use, or is there um, sort of video training and so on that people can go through so that, for example, my HR uh, director could um, use it for all our employment contracts, et cetera? Absolutely, absolutely. So uh, we, we actually have um, uh, a great help uh, notes that are available uh, with Adobe's website. But at the same time, if somebody goes to YouTube, we have our own document cloud channel. So there are YouTube videos uh, across for anybody, right from setting up at the IT level, where they are adding users, they're they are making sure that the admin rights are proper for everyone. And at the same time, we also have usage uh, videos where uh, how to set up a particular template or a document for signature. For our enterprise customers, we have additional hand holding. We call it the onboarding sessions. There are two onboarding sessions, one for the IT, for them to set it up first. So if at all it is required with their single sign on or it is uh, to integrate with their active directory or stuff like that, the backend mm -hmm. setting first. So IT onboarding happens. And after that, there is a user onboarding where we do hand holding for our users to make sure they cross this. But uh, as you saw me doing it, it is as easy as sending an email if you're using just the plain vanilla version of it. Okay, so we've, we have got a few brave um, people in the audience who've asked some questions and thank you, thank you to them. Uh, first off, Stephen wants to know, how do we export the documents to our SharePoint and not hosting in Adobe Cloud? Um, and there's a follow-up to that, which is, can the automated email sent to a user not from Adobe, uh, can it be customized to enterprise email? Absolutely. So, Stephen, thank you so much for your questions. Those are brilliant questions. So, starting with the SharePoint one, uh, let me share with you that when we are talking about Office 365 integration, it is a very deep integration. We are very well integrated with SharePoint as well. So if you are in SharePoint, if you are in the SharePoint uh, dashboard, you are, you are in the view, you can from SharePoint right click on a file. If you have the license for Adobe sign, right click on a file and send for signature from SharePoint. So you can initiate the workflow from SharePoint. The best part about this is that when it, when it goes out for signature and people sign it, it comes back and sits in your SharePoint repository. So it comes back to your SharePoint. So I hope I answered that part of your question. Uh, the second part was uh, around, sorry, I... It's quite all right. The second part was, can the automated email sent to a user not from Adobe, can that be customized to an enterprise email? So yes, so it is, it is, so our enterprise license will allow you to make sure that uh, your domain is used. But let me, let me clarify this because when we are looking at a experience for your customer or if you're sending it externally, yes, it will have the look and feel of your brand, but the email is always sent by one server and one server only because it needs to be authenticated. If there are possibilities of you or every customer of ours utilizing their own domain, then it might create phishing possibilities. That is the reason whenever a customer asks, how do I know this email came from a legit source, it is from a particular domain that is from Adobe. So it will always come that way, but that is for a particular reason, that is for the security reason. Okay, thank you. And just to even things up before we close, there's a nice question for uh, Marianne from uh, Jobian. 
In Singapore, there's an Electronics Transaction Act that governs e-signatures. Unfortunately, it doesn't mention explicitly whether e-sign can be used for a tenancy agreement. Uh, can you, uh, do you have any thoughts on that? Sure, that's actually a commonly asked question as well. So thanks for that question, Julian. So if we think about actually the act, it actually works the other way around. That means all contracts, typical business contracts can use electronic signatures except for an exclusion list. So this exclusion list sits in the first schedule of the ETA, the Electronic Transactions Act, and actually leases and transfer of property, which they call immovable property, is one of the excluded matters in that so-called excluded list. But the, the interesting thing about um, Singapore is that we're starting to become more open and it actually there's a case law specifically on a tenancy arrangement back in 2005. So basically the tenant actually Actually wanted to renew his lease and he just did it via email. So on the face of it, you have thought that the law would prohibit it, but the court actually took the decision and they ruled and it was also subsequently relied on in a, in a later 2010 case that the email confirmation was sufficient to be an acknowledgement from the tenant to want to continue the lease. And bear in mind, he, he didn't even like insert his signature or use a stylus or anything like that. It was just a mere email that was certainly defined who the person was. It was his name in the email, in the header of the email, and that sufficed as an agreement. So I would say, um, this is not to say that just because there's case law on it, we're a common law country, you're going to go out and sign all your lease agreements that way. I would say that's not the right approach. But if it's relatively a low risk um, situation, mm -hmm. and if you could also, and maybe in the COVID situation, there's maybe a serious lockdown, no one can go out of their houses, perhaps it might be worth actually having an agreement. That means you and the landlord agree that you both would use an electronic signature to kind of agree to the, to the agreement. So that if there's ever a dispute, like the landlord saying, no, I never agreed to this document. This was not signed by me. It was not authorized. Someone else in my company signed it. You have an email confirmation from the landlord himself saying that he will stand by an electronic signature for the tenancy agreement, especially in this COVID situation. And maybe just to expand a little bit on that, our Singapore Land Authority, they are looking towards having a fully paperless e-lodgement of title deeds because that is the way the future looks, digital. Everyone wants to go without paper and it's just a matter of time. I think a lot of things like e-filed today, court documents, land title deeds, it's, it's just getting it there. It will take time, but we will get there. Thank you very much, Marianne. And just finally to wrap up, Stephen has come back to ask, where can we get the 14 days trial information from? I think that's for Rajesh. Yes, uh, Victor. So Stephen, thank you. Uh, I will uh, share the link with uh, Sharon probably and she can disseminate it with the members uh, going forward. Is that okay? That's perfect. We, we, will, we always send a, a thank you message to everybody who attends our webinars. So Stephen, we will we will have that in the thank you email and that will most likely come either from Sharon or Geraldine. So thank you. Um, we're beginning to lose some people because we have overrun time. So let me draw this to a conclusion. I want to thank uh, Rajesh and Marianne very much. Um, great presentations and really a tremendous um, exposition of both the risks and how they're managed by the tools that Adobe has created. So congratulations, uh, not only for your own transformation journey, but also for enabling others. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, I also want to thank you for your time and your company. Um, let us know how you find this webinar. You can drop us a line to here to help at sicc.com.sg. Uh, also let us know, feel free, if you've got some suggestions for topics that you'd like us to cover, but that we haven't so far. Um, and until the next time, thank you and all the very best. Bye-bye. Bye, thank you. Bye, thank you again.